Hey guys, it's Runchix from Love the Spot. Today I'm going to review five biggest pots in the Golf on Challenge so far, giving you my analysis on how these played out. Uh, Phil and Vinny V played 15 sessions to date and Phil has lost all but one. The challenge is currently suspended as Phil needs to clear his head and hopefully regroup for more action against Vinny starting from the 1st of March. Let's start with the fifth largest pot that was played in the challenge so far and we make our way up from here. This is standard preflop. Interesting decision by Vinny to check. It's a great hand to do this with. Both check call and check raise are valid options from here and I assume he might be going for a check call here considering his blockers. Turn doesn't change anything and Vinny goes for a delayed C bet. His hand is good pretty often and now with additional draws out there he has a chance to extract value from weaker hands and he's not afraid to get raised too often on this turn. Phil decides to go for the raise uh, and it's a good decision he's trying to build the pot with uh, what most likely is the best hand at the moment moreover he has redraw against sets which Venny was likely to check on this flop. Venny goes all in instead of calling now call would have been all right but Venny would be in a tough spot on the river there would be a full pot size bet left and he's out of position at the moment he still might be ahead against some hands like ace three five with hearts or some other draws with hearts but most of the river cards present problems for Venny. so simplifying here is a good idea so with his equity plus potential fold equity versus fill going all in is a profitable play Phil's hand holds uh, on the river and he wins this one. Fourth biggest pot. Standard pre-flop. Then he flopped top pair top kicker on a board that is not usually great for him as a three better. He opts to bet. He'd be happy to take the hand down right here. Wouldn't always be able to continue against the raise but has a lot of playability against Phil's calling range here. Phil does call. Raising would have been an interesting option, but with so much immediate and backdoor equity, Phil is happy to play more streets in position. He has a lot of equity versus the types of hands which Venny would be bet folding on this turn, so Phil doesn't need to force the action and is definitely better off playing more streets in position, potentially allowing Venny to bluff the wrong spot. And there are many turn cards where Phil would have a profitable raise on the turn. Flush completes on the turn, Venny is bound to check here very often and definitely would be doing this with a decent amount of his flushes. Phil checks too, I like this decision. His hand gets more value if he opts to go for one bet on the river and he has potential to induce a bluff from Venny. Venny checks the river. His hand has some showdown value versus straight draws so he might win the showdown occasionally and him trying to bet here doesn't seem to accomplish much. Now of course Phil has quite a few flushes in his range and he will go for value with those and here's where the king of spades blocker can play a huge role. Phil goes for value on the river and Venny jams. I like the bluff. It makes a lot of sense considering the types of hands that Venny is blocking and unblocking and Phil does make the call here. It's definitely not an easy call in his shoes as Venny is quite likely to have played his strong flushes this way but good for Phil. I'm sure everybody was happy to see him take this one down. All right, next hand. Standard preflop. They both flop the same hand. Phil opts to check. Um, the SPR here is huge and it's definitely a reasonable decision. Then he goes for value. Notice the two-thirds pot size bet. He of course doesn't want to allow free cards for Phil. He is not afraid of a check raise as that's not going to happen very often. And check call is a good decision by Phil. Check raise would have been overplaying the hand in my opinion. Beautiful turn for both of them. Phil's hand is well concealed and so is Venny's. That deuce is not bringing the full house for him too often considering that Phil blocks the queen. So now Phil is hoping that Venny has a flush and of course goes for the check. Leading there would have been an unconventional play considering the action on the flap. Venny checks back. His best bet is to try to get one more street of value from the range of hands that Phil has at this point 
and clearly it's easier to make that money on the river. Phil goes for another check, which is beautiful. He knows Venny is going to bet a large chunk of hands that would be able to call versus Phil's bet. And also, Phil's going to make money against bluffs that Venny is likely to make. Venny's decision is easy. He's trying to get some value as he planned. And Phil goes for check raise. I like it. He's only losing to pocket fives or pocket queens as well as pocket nines, which are not very likely. Now, Venny can't be too happy about this. Most hands that do this for value beat deuces full of queens. But this is Phil, and it's possible that he's slightly over bluffing a spot like this, and Venny makes the call. And so they split this pot. All right, now the second biggest pot um, started as a single raised pot. Once again, standard pre-flop. Uh, both players flopped great. Phil has an open ender plus a 10 high flush draw, and Venny has a two pair and open ender. Phil chucks. I don't think he has significant leading range on this board, so there's not much to talk about here. Venny's seabed is very standard, and so is Phil's call. Turn brings a straight for both of them. Phil checks again. He would love to go for a check raise with this hand, considering that he has the nuts plus a good redraw. Betting himself would have been perfectly fine as well, but it's likely that the check raise has a higher expected value here. Venny has the nuts plus redraw to a full house, so of course he's happy to bet here and try to extract maximum value. Phil naturally goes for the check raise, and Venny decides to just call, which makes a lot of sense. There's still a full pot size bet left on the river, and Venny is happy to utilize his position here. At this stage, it's clear that Phil most likely has the same straight, so Venny has some room for trying to get Phil off it on some rivers. Flush River and Phil is happy to go for value here. Now, Venny has a decision to make, but it's hard to find a fold. His bet call on the turn could have indicated to Phil that he is not likely to have Jack-10 plus clubs here. And Phil very likely would bet many of his straights here the same way. And also, Venny knows that the only flushes that make sense in Phil's shoes are jacks or tens with clubs, both of which Venny is blocking, and of course, jack ten with clubs. However, for all of those hands, they had to be the type of hand which, first of all, doesn't three bet pre flop, and then doesn't check raise the flop. So that range is very, very narrow, and of course, Venny has to call. And the pot goes to Phil once again. And finally, the biggest pot in the challenge so far. And again, it's a single race pot, and the pre-flop is somewhat standard. Both players like this flop. Venny has top two pair out of position, and he has a nut backdoor flush draw. Phil has a wrap, but it's important to know that it's not to the nuts. None of the straights that he could hit would give him the nuts, with the exception of a six. However, Phil doesn't hold any spades, so in reality, he only has two outs for the nuts. When he checks, here I don't expect him to have much of a leading range on this board, and Phil goes for c bet. Checking back would have been a good option, but trying to take the hand down right here is great for Phil. Then he calls and checks the turn, as once again it's unlikely that he would have a sizable leading range here. Phil decides to pot. He now has a longer wrap as a4 on the river is an additional out, but that being said, he only has three outs to the nuts, which are the six of diamonds, four of diamonds, and the four of hearts. Of course, Phil knows that he's not blocking many of the draws that Venny could have uh, check called the flop with. And he has just the nine high at this stage, while something like two thirds of the deck give him the straight on the river. I would have preferred a check here myself with this specific hand, but I don't hate his play. Check raised by Venny, very good move. His hand is best most of the time, and he has a few redraws to the nuts. Phil has a decision to make. We have to remember that this is a single race pot, so many hands that outright dominate Phil's range are not in Venny's range. So most likely Phil has odds to call versus Venny. 
And here we clearly see that he has odds to call versus the specific hand, but the EV of calling is not going to be significantly higher than folding, which of course is zero. Phil makes the call and we see a queen on the river. All of the flush draws missed, all of the small straights missed. The only thing that this queen brings is a Broadway straight. And of course, Phil is going to have quite a few of these by now with king, queen, jack with clubs or spades types of hand. Then he checks his two pair and it's definitely a good decision. He can induce a lot of bluffs from Phil here and check calling is most likely the most profitable line here. Phil goes all in and it's perfectly fine. I mean, he has what probably is the worst hand he ever has here. So who can blame him for that? And then he does make a good call. So overall in this hand, we see that Phil has made possibly a suboptimal decision on the turn and things just escalated from there. But that being said, all of his plays in the hand made sense. It's interesting to note that this is the only hand that Venny won out of the five biggest pots they've played so far. Yeah, it's the largest of them all, but still. So it's three for Phil, one for Venny and one split. Yet after 15 days of play, Phil is losing over 900,000 euro. First of all, the 10,000 hands um, that they've played so far is not a sample from which we can make any objective conclusions. Variance in heads up PLO is significant, but I want to remind you something that this challenge illustrates uh, nicely so far. It's not about the big pots. Too many people spend too much time analyzing their biggest pots, hoping to learn something important from those. But while doing so, neglect areas of their game which truly require improvement. As you can see, you can win most of the big pots and still end up close to a million in the red. Anyway, let me know what you think about my analysis in the comment section below. If you've gotten this far, I suppose you've enjoyed the video, so hit that like button as it helps to support my channel. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll make more videos like this one about the Phil Galphon challenge, so keep an eye out on that. I hope Phil is going to be back in action against Vinny, as this is a very interesting match to rail. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.